here was a basic run through of differential expression and plotting volcano plots, heat maps, GSEA, PCA, and it was all in Python without R. So we're going to be doing bulk differential expression using PyDSeq2, which is a re-implementation of DSeq2, which is normally run in R, in Python instead. So we can do this whole analysis in our Jupyter Notebook. You can install PyDSeq2 like this. And we're going to go ahead and import the modules from it that we need, as well as pandas for some data frame manipulation. I already have accounts CSV. So at this step, we're assuming you have account CSV or any format of accounts table. I'm just going to go ahead and read mine in. If it's not a CSV, you'll have to change how you import it here. But that's a pretty straightforward step. So we have our accounts table with our ensemble IDs and the samples. We have to make a few changes. First, we want to set the ensemble IDs to the actual data frame index column. So just set the index to gene ID or whatever your first column name is. The next thing we want to do is get rid of columns that only have zero counts. So we're just going to get the sum of each row and ask if it's greater than zero and then filter on that. So we went from 60,000 features to 30,000. And then for PyDSeq2, we need to transpose the counts table. So we need the gene IDs to actually be the columns and the samples to be the rows. So we can just pass a dot T for transpose. So our counts table is now ready. We need to now prepare the metadata for this data set. I don't actually have a separate CSV for the metadata. So I'm just going to create a metadata data frame from scratch. So I have four control samples and four replicative senescence samples. I'm going to zip the index column from counts, which is just these sample names. And I'm just going to manually input a list for the condition. So here, the first four samples, I'm just going to label C for control, and then the next four as RS for replicative senescence. And then I can wrap this directly in a pandas data frame, and I'm going to specify the columns as sample and condition. So we just have this simple data frame. I'm just going to call this metadata. So we have our metadata. If you had a batch or other variables, you could just add more columns here. But anyway, we need to set the sample column as the index, just like we did for the counts. All right, so now our sample table is ready. So we have our sample metadata and we have our counts table. We can now do differential expression. We're going to use the dseq dataset function here to initialize our DDS object. We're going to specify that our counts object is that counts data frame we just made. We need to specify this clinical argument, which is Going to be the metadata and we need to specify the design factors or the formula for your differential expression so we just have one variable condition here so we're specifying condition so this is a little different than dseq2 and r you know in dseq2 you do something like condition plus batch as one string but here uh, let's say if you had a batch you would actually have to supply a list. So instead of doing that plus and the little tilde sign, you just put a list of your conditions here. And that's the same thing. But anyways, we're just gonna save this as DDS now. Oops, I just made a simple little error here. I had capitalized C. So we have our DDS object now. So if you're familiar with ScanP, it's actually an A data object now, where if you look at the OBS, you have your observation data frame, which is just the metadata. You look at X, it's the actual count matrix. And then if you look at var, it's the gene IDs. But anyways, we can actually run eSeq2 now like this. It does give a lot of output, which for the most part you can just ignore. So running the dseq2 just added a bunch of statistics to our DDS object, which we can now use to find our differentially expressed genes. And this contrast is going to be similar to what you're used to in dseq2 and R. We're specifying that we're comparing RS to C because RS is first here. And of course, we're using the condition column, which should be capital C. So we set this, but to actually calculate it, we need to do the dot summary function on it. 
So now it actually runs the statistical tests. And you get a lot of output, especially for these ones with very low base mean, which probably had a bunch of zeros. But you can more or less ignore that. To get the actual data frame now from StatRes, we can call the results data frame from StatRes. And now if we look at res, we have our differentially expressed data frame. But first, let's uh, convert these ensemble IDs to actual gene symbols. And I actually have a tool that I published to do this easily in Python. But you can go ahead and install my package like this. And then we're going to use my ID map tool. And we're going to make a mapper. We have to specify that the species is human. By default, it's looking for ensemble IDs. So we don't have to change any of the other parameters. This should just be a dictionary now with all the ensemble IDs and the gene symbols. But what we can do is make a new column in res. We're going to call it symbol. It's going to be res.index, which is just the gene ID column. And we're going to map this mapper across it. We have the actual gene symbols. But let's actually do a little filtering on this data frame now to remove some of these genes that are very lowly expressed. So we're going to get rid of everything with a base mean of less than 10. What you pick is a little arbitrary, but that's a good place to start. We're left with 14,000 genes. And these aren't differentially expressed. These are just the ones that were detected in the data set. If you wanted to find your differentially expressed genes that are actually significant, you can filter this further. So p-adjusted value less than 0 0.05. And I like to do an absolute value log to fold change filter as well. I want genes that actually changed at least 0.5 log fold. So if we look at SIGs, now we have 1,100 differentially expressed genes, and you can filter those up or down based on the stat positive or negative value or the log fold change positive or negative value. So this is kind of the bare bones required workflow to get your differentially expressed genes. I'll go a little bit into the downstream analysis and some of the things we didn't go over, like making a PCA plot, for example. So let's start off by doing a PCA plot here. We're going to be using ScanP, actually, so you have to pip install this if you don't have it. Since our DDS object is already an AND data object, the ScanP package lets us easily do this. So we're just going to do the scan PTL PCA on our DDS object. And then we can just plot that. So we can do the scan P plot PCA, DDS, and we need to specify condition is what we're going to color it on. And then we have to specify size because it's used to plotting thousands of single cell dots. Oh, again, I forgot to capitalize C. So they would be very small uh, if we don't specify at least 200, but you can play around with that number. I already know from working with these data in the past that the PCA doesn't look that nice, but here is the PCA plot. Of course, you would hope that your sample groups group together a little better than this. But anyways, let's do some typical downstream stuff like GSEA. For GSEA, I'm going to use GSEA PY. So again, we have our res data frame, which is all the genes detected in our data set, whether they were differentially expressed or not. We're going to make a new data frame called ranking, and we're just going to take the symbol column, which is the one we added, and the stat column. We're going to drop the NA values, and we're going to sort by stat with the largest on top. And then we also want to drop duplicates. There's going to be a few ensemble IDs that map to multiple symbols. If you really want to figure out what's going on in your data, you can do that. It's just going to be a couple of genes, probably, and not really impact the pathway analysis overall. So actually, it was only one gene in this whole data set. So now that we have this ranked data frame, we can run GSEA. I'm going to use the gene ontology database. But just as a quick example, you can add your own manual set of genes too. So I'm just making a toy gene set called things. And you can put it in a dictionary. So you can have multiple terms in one dictionary. But this is just one. I'm just picking the first couple of genes here for fun. And then we'll create our pre-res object with GP pre-rank, passing our ranking. And then for gene sets, if you want to find which gene sets are available, like Keg and other things, you can look 
a GP get library names and it gives you a list. But from that list, I picked Go 2021. And you can also pass your manual set. Uh, don't worry about this too much. You can increase this number, which would theoretically make analysis more accurate, but it'll take a little longer. This error, don't worry about it. It's just telling me there were a couple stat values that were equal. So we have our pre-res, which is a class object, but from that we can actually get a data frame. We don't have a nice little function to do that, but I made one here. You can just copy and paste this from my GitHub, which actually is going to make an out data frame with the term, with the FDR value, so the p-value corrected, the enrichment score, and then the normalized enrichment. So we can sort that to get the most enriched, or in this case, negatively enriched. And then you can take the term, for example, if we wanted the first term in this data frame, and we can make a GSEA plot like this. Let's make a quick little heat map. So we're going to import NumPy and Seaborn, which is just a plotting module. So again, we're going to go back to our DDS object, and we can actually get the normalized counts from our layers here under normed counts. So if we do dds.layers normed counts, we get the actual normalized values. I'm going to create one more layer using these normed counts within our DDS object, and it's going to be the log 1p values from our normed counts layer. And if we look at DDS, of course, we just added another layer, log 1p. And if we look at that, it's just a matrix of log normalized values. So this is what we're going to use to plot the heat maps. And of course, you can pick whatever genes you want for the heat map. There's not like a rule. I'll just show with the significant genes as a toy example. This isn't really going to show much because there's a thousand genes and there's not really any point to this heat map, but I'm just showing it as an example. So I'm actually going to make a subset of the DDS object. So DDS has all 31,000 genes, but we can subset DDS with sigs.index, which is just the gene IDs here. So when passing these 1100 gene IDs to filter DDS on. So if we look at DDS sigs, which we just made, there's only 1100 genes in this DDS object. We need three things to make a heat map here. We need the log 1p values. We need the var names from our DDS sigs, which is just the gene IDs. And we need the obs names, which is the sample names. So we can throw those together into a pandas data frame function here. So we're passing the log 1p. Importantly, we have to transpose it here because I want each row to be a gene to set the index to those var names. And we want the columns to represent the sample names. So if we look at that, it's just a data frame with the sample names, the genes, and the values. So we can plot that with Seaborn cluster map, passing that data frame, telling it to calculate the z-score, and I'm just picking a different color map from the default one. And then here we have our heat map. Let me show one more quick example where I pick specific gene symbols that I want to plot. So you can have any list of gene symbols. I have this list. This is a senescence data set. So I actually have this list that I generated. I was just playing around with earlier, seeing how well ChatGPT did at coming up with senescence markers. So I've just imported this list as a list of symbols here. It can be any list of symbols you want. And again, what we have is SIGs. We have the symbol column here. So we can filter SIGs if the symbol is in our SendGPT or whatever input list you have. So there's not that many that were actually differentially expressed, which is kind of interesting because it's, it's an essence data set. But we can get the index from this, even though we filtered it on symbol, which is the ensemble IDs. And we can use that index to filter the DDS object like I showed earlier. We're going to make a DDS sub, which is the DDS filtered by this, which is this up here, which is just an eight by nine object now. And we can do it just like we did before. I'm gonna make a data frame with this. However, if we wanna actually plot the gene symbols instead of the ensemble IDs, what I'm gonna do here is set the index to the index mapped from that mapper we initialized earlier. So if we look at this now, we actually have the gene symbol instead of the ensemble ID. And then finally, we can do 
almost identical to what we already did above, but now we have something we can actually read. And then finally, I'll just show how to make a quick volcano plot. Within my Sambomix package, I have a volcano function. So again, we have the res data frame. We're just going to pass this directly to our volcano function. And we have to specify we want to label the symbol column here. And there we go. We got a one line volcano plot. You can change some of the thresholds here and what you want to label. For example, if I wanted to label these nine senescence genes, we had that grapher data frame, right? And then I'm just going to get the index column, which is the list of genes that were differentially expressed. So we can just pass that to the to label to label those specific genes. And there's a lot of other things you can change with this volcano plot. I have a video that goes into this volcano tool more in depth. But anyways, here was a very basic run through of differential expression using PyDSeq2. And we did some basic things like plotting volcano plots, heat maps, GSEA, PCA, and importantly, it was all done directly in Python without having to do any crosstalk between R.